All right, guys, we are back. Uh, saving the OBS, I believe part five. I know I said the last video was gonna be the last one, but I lied. I do that from time to time. It wasn't on purpose. Um, I thought we could get it all done, but the last video drug out for uh, 39 minutes, so I thought that was plenty enough. Uh, the last video went from uh, basically bare metal all the way through paint. So if you guys like that or, uh, you know, Make sure you give us a like and a subscribe. Um, let's go ahead and move on to this next video. It's assembly. Um, I already had Lou in here unmasking and stuff, and he got a little carried away. He is like a, a little working ninja, so everybody needs a Lou. So let's go check out what all he's got done real quick. All right, everything is unmasked. Um, you can see we still ain't sanding and buffed anything. We started... Um, he was like a ninja, like I said, and got this fender and all this stuff already done. It's hoods on, all that, the hard stuff. Not a lot of filming going on during that, but uh, now we're back. Hey, we've got um, headlights going in, grill getting ready to go on. A little bit of dirt over here. Yeah, it turned out slick. We'll go ahead and get this all finished and put back together today. Uh, throw the grill in, throw all the lights in, finish making sure all of our gaps are right, and basically everything but sand and buff. And then we will take it out over to cold storage over here and bring in the bed and the topper. So that's what this video is gonna be about. Um, we gotta replace some bed rails on the underside, they're rusty and uh, no good where it mounts. We did all this work, so we don't want to leave the bed like that. But um, so we're going to go ahead and get this out, get that bed in here, and we'll set that topper up. It's got some chipped up stuff around the edges, a little busted fiberglass. We're going to do some fiberglass repair. And then uh, giving it a fresh white coat. So a lot of chips and scrapes on it. So. That's what's going on right now, fellas. We will uh, get back on it. All right, guys, we've got the truck out. Uh, this side here, we went ahead and brought the bed in and flipped it over so we could show you real good what it looks like. All these rails on these are perfectly fine other than surface rust, except for this one right here. And this is the one closest to the cab, and I do believe that's probably where salt and snow packs up in there um, so that's kind of you know what led to this but i'm just going to cut this out uh, i've got a good lip over here on this side and this one's bad so i'll just cut this out nice and flush here all the way down same on this side all the way down and then when i bend new pieces i can usually only bend one side at a time so i'll uh well, we'll get into that here in a little bit. I'll bend up three new pieces for this section here um, and we'll go ahead and weld them in place. And luckily for us, the actual mounting holes are still in good shape. All this, all this stuff here is really good, both sides. So it's literally just the cross rail. So we don't have to get into replacing no bolts or, I mean, uh, nuts or anything in here. So we'll just whack that off there, right down there pull it out and go ahead and put a new one in. And then as far as under here, we're just going to um, clean it up and undercoat it. It's There's not really uh, you know, a need to go hog wild on this part. So just an old bed. Usually I would just uh, go ahead and replace these rails with a replacement, but this being a step side, I cannot find the exact lengths I need they're actually a little bit smaller for this step side than they are for the other ones. So that's why we're building this. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, set this up on a tripod and I'll start whacking that out. All right, I cut this piece out here. Uh, what's left of it anyway. Now, like I said, I'll go ahead and uh, 
bend up three pieces basically to replace this. You can see this lip here is still good, so got that going for me. I couldn't get my grinder in here to make the cut, obviously because the bottom of the beds, you know, comes down lower here. So, you know, all I did is cut it up higher, but I can go back now and make those cuts and go ahead and shave it off so it'll have a lip exactly like that on this side. But uh, I'll go ahead and hunt out some material for this and then finish getting this cut out and we'll get some pieces bent. We'll be back. All right, I got it all cut out a little bit better. Uh, there is a couple spots on this lip over here. Remember I said it had a good lip, I lied. I do have to cut this out here and replace that, but I'm just gonna do you know the bad sections and then um, finish grinding all that and then go ahead and make those pieces and get them put in. But before I'm ready to do all that, um, I'm gonna go over here. We're working on this topper too, this glass topper. Um, and I don't know if you guys have ever worked with fiberglass before. It's not, it's not hard. Anybody can really do it. Um, the main thing is, is getting out uh, all the damaged spots while you're grinding it. I just use a three inch uh, grinder on a roll lock disc and grind that down and you can see when you start getting through to the glass where the bad glass is it's because it's still white so we'll hit all that and knock that out and then i'll also when I, once i get this side done i'll also flip it over and redo the back because the back's going to be jacked up but uh also there's a crack here so i'm gonna i'm gonna just gonna grind that down Craig. Now we're trying to get that out the best we can. That's the damage spot. Now listen, don't go too far. We're getting thin. We're going to stop there. Now what we'll do is glass it and then come back in on the other side, grind the back side a little bit, relay glass back there, and that's, this thing will be just like brand new again. Uh, another one here, I might have to make a relief cut. Lou, can you grab me the three inch cutoff wheel? Um, I might have to make a relief cut because you guys can see how this is kind of uh, different here and there ain't really no way of lining it up. It kind of got ripped, so. I'll make I'll grind this the best I can and then if it won't if I can't get it to lay flat I'll just make a relief cut of it and then it will proceed on. All right, got it all ground. Um tapered it out real nice so we can lay you know a couple good pieces there and have a real nice repair um one thing i did want to say was uh make sure you clean it good i just use acetone on a rag usually and just clean the area real good and make sure there's no wax or anything on it before i lay this out um I went ahead and papered up the bed so i can do these spots i had quite a few spots on this this is all stuff that I didn't realize was here and um, I, I can't I just can't leave this kind of stuff it's it uh, it bothers me it wasn't really part of the repair but my name's gonna be on this um, you know it's really turned out to be a beautiful truck and I'm sure he's gonna show it off so uh, and I want it to look nice so we're going to go ahead and repair all of his busted stuff here on his bed and just kind of strengthen this thing up a little bit and uh also of course finish cutting this out i'll go ahead and i think what i'm going to do here is just cut a whole new lip for this side and i'll put it in and then go back and put the box in like i was talking about originally 
That way I'm not messing with just cutting out little pieces of this. So I'll just cut a whole new one, weld it in place, and then proceed on. Um, before, and then when I'm done, of course, on this side, then I'll flip it over and cut this stuff out on the opposite side and go ahead and, uh, you know, tack in some new pieces in there. But until then, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set you guys up. Oh, yeah, I guess I wanted to go over the fiberglass a little bit. I just use uh, whatever fiberglass resin and hardener I can get from my paint supply store. Uh, I think I picked this up at O'Reilly's the other day, maybe. Um, but anyway, just follow the directions on there. It's not real hard if you're doing this. This, this fiberglass repairs are not hard at all. Just get you some mat, and they usually sell it right there. Just get you some mat and cut it up in the strips you need <clears throat> for the size of your repairs. So, you know, cut some little chunks like this, you know, and then so forth and so on to the other spots. Uh, right now I'm cutting the strips for the bigger repair over there. But um, I'm going to go ahead and keep cutting these up. And then here in a minute I'll have all my glass and then I'll mix up. I don't like to mix up a whole lot. Uh, this stuff sets up pretty quick usually 10 minutes so and I like to take my time and make sure I get all my air bubbles out uh, I don't have a roller today usually you use like a, a roller for your mat um, but we'll just uh, I'll show you how to get it out with your fingers you can kind of just mash it once it's all together and uh, you can see the air bubbles separate as long as you got it wet enough with resin but uh I'll go ahead and get this stuff all ready and we'll be back here in a minute. All right, I got everything cut. I've got everything ready and set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and set you guys up on the tripod here and you can watch me uh, lay this out. It's, like I said, there's not a lot to it. You guys can do these fiberglass repairs um, yourself. There's no need in paying big money to do it. Uh, let's just uh, set you up here. All right, guys, uh, we're ready. Uh, on this resin, I used about a quarter of a can, so I'm gonna use about a quarter of this tube. I believe that's the way they even tell you to do it. So just you know, use your best guesstimate there. You want this stuff to set up kind of quick. You know, you don't want to you don't want to have to wait till tomorrow. This you can have this set up and be working it today. So go ahead and throw that in there. Give it a good stir. And I like to go ahead and wet out my area a little bit. All right, guys, that stuff's good and wet. You can see it's all, all the way through. So I wetted it on the back and then wet it on the front, and you're good. You can lay it on. I'm going to go ahead and grab this long one here. Now, don't worry about if it overhangs your repair. You can trim that stuff off later. You just want to fill up this, this groove and, uh, you know, repair the damage spot. We'll trim all this stuff off here in a little bit. Um, it don't matter you can get it too thick it, I mean it's 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 gonna be sticking up you're gonna see that it's gonna be way up and over 
just fine, no problem. We'll shave it off. All right, let out a couple more pieces here. All right. One more piece here. That'll take care of that one. I'll go ahead and like I was saying, mash these air bubbles out. And I'll come back here in a little bit and show you guys that when I can take one of these gloves off and grab the camera. Uh, maybe on the last spot I do, I'll try to clean up and do that real quick. All right, that laid out nice. Now when this is all good and hard, we'll just go back with our mud hog or our eight inch grinder or our eight inch sander and uh, knock these spots off real quick with some 36 grit. Uh, not hard, won't take long. I like to use the 36 just to eat it off real quick because it's got everything you do has to have a coat of uh, um, you know, fill over it at when you're done. It's got to have a coat of body filler. Or I usually use Duraglass when I'm doing fiberglass repairs, but fills in the pinholes and gives it that extra strength. All right, guys, I'm gonna continue on. All right, I got it all laid out and I uh, changed my gloves here. You guys can kind of see those air pockets in there. Now this stuff's starting to, starting to uh, kick. I can smell it kicking, but I just take my glove and my thumb and just slowly from the center out, I know I've got plenty of glass on it, so we'll just work them air bubbles since I don't have a, a roller, and most of you are not gonna have a fiberglass roller. That's the whole point in showing you this. Uh, you can do this without all the fancy tools. So, I just worked them air bubbles completely out of it. I'll do the same here. And if you lay that stuff out real nice and wet and try to keep the air pockets from getting in it from the get-go as you're laying it out, there's really not a lot of work to do here. But you can see the air bubbles and they'll slowly work their way out to the outside. Well, it looks like this one it does not even have any. Um, the rest of them laid out really good. This stuff is, uh, I don't know, it'd probably take another hour, hour, two maybe. Should be pretty well kicked. But then we can go ahead and start forming it and shaping it. All right. Yeah. Nice. No air. No air bubbles. Oh, there's one. Let's knock that bad boy out of there. Yeah. Yeah. 
All gone. All right. The rest of these I already did. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut me some new cardboard, pour out a little more glass, and move on to this bed real quick. Thanks for watching. If you guys are learning anything, smash that like and that subscribe button. We would appreciate it. We'll be back. All right, guys, glass is all set up nice and hard. We can go ahead and uh, trim all that and um, body work it. We'll get to that in a minute. I want to show you what I got done while that stuff was setting up. Went ahead and made this new lip piece here. It will uh, slide in there kind of like that there. Um, so that's going to be for that new lip. I still got to cut out that old one yet, but I'll show you guys. I don't have a, you know, a break that's over three foot here. We're still a pretty small shop. So, um, I'll show you guys, a lot of you guys aren't going to have that either. You know, if you're just doing this at home, trying to, you know, do a quick repair on your truck. Um, I can show you how to bend this piece of metal. It's almost four foot long. And uh, I can kind of show you how I do it here with without a break that big. I, uh, I've i kind of set up a spot back here on the steel table that I've got. And I just take flat pieces. Well, this is the piece from the break, the other break that I've got. I just lay it on top and then another flat piece. And then just work it with a, with a mallet right down to where you need it. And just work it down. I just do that in each, you know, slow increments all the way down, make sure it's nice and straight. You don't want to warp it, so you just keep it nice and even. You guys kind of get the idea I hope um, like I've said before we're a pretty small shop we don't I, I would like to have a bigger break eventually we just don't have anywhere to put it right now uh, we're you know just overloaded with stuff right now and maybe eventually expand and get a bigger one but this is how I got to do pieces over three foot for now uh, not that I do this stuff a lot so it, it doesn't really matter but yeah, this that's just uh, how I, the way I learned to do it, and um, just thought I'd pass that on so you guys don't have to be scared of, you know, oh, how am I going to bend this piece of metal? No, there's ways you can do it. You just got to learn to uh, adapt and overcome. I will go ahead and finish bending that one, and then that goes on the top here once it's made. That'll be the top piece here and then I'll make one more that will go down in here and come up over the top and so then I'll have a complete box again and then once I do that I'll weld that up and then pretty much the bottom will be done I'll go ahead and I'm gonna finish cleaning these up and then I'm gonna go ahead and pour 15 these other rails like I said they're all solid they're just surface rust so we're going to nip that in the butt now um, but we'll go ahead and uh, you know clean this up weld it up and pour 15 the the rest of that there and then uh, flip it over and then i've got to cut out and make uh, what the pieces there that you see that are rusty so we'll get on that uh, after i get this box built i'm going to go ahead and continue on forming those pieces and uh, we'll be back to bodywork this real quick all right i've got it all bent to what i think is straight you guys can see it there i took the clamps off now just to make sure I, it's pretty close i'm just going to flip it over here and check it it's pretty daggone close guys almost a perfect 90. i'm going to go ahead and uh you know, lay it down here and give it a tap, make sure it's nice and flat, just to double check. 
but it looks pretty good. I'll take it over here and you guys can kind of see how it goes real quick. kind of slides in there like that and then when it's all obviously once I get it all primed uh, weld through primer we will uh, oh there it is you can kind of see it fits together real nice and snug just like a box we'll weld all that up and then come back in put our other one up here in this our other one is basically going to be an exact copy of this one um, this piece here and it'll just slide right on down in there and we'll burn it in real good so I'm gonna go ahead and carry on and we'll be back in a few All right, all the pieces are bent and fit, and then we went ahead and sprayed them, the insides of them, the stuff that we won't be able to get to after it's welded with uh, self-etch weld-through primer. Uh, it looks a little bit something like this. I like to buy it by the spray can. It's good stuff. It'll help protect what, um, you know, what's on the inside. You know, at least it, it maybe a little bit I don't know maybe it's all in my head maybe not but uh, I feel like with the extra precautions you know help keep it from rusting out and rotting out later on but um, I'll go ahead and now that stuff's dry put that all together and weld it up and then like I said we'll flip it over do the bottom side but for now I've been grinding and body work in this fiberglass and uh, before I go too much into this I just want to say if you guys are working with fiberglass make sure you're wearing your masks and your glasses this stuff will eat your lungs up it'll get in your eyes it's itchy it stinks it's uh, it's not fun to work with but anybody can do it it's not rocket science uh, this spot here I don't know if you guys remember what they looked like before they were humped up pretty big but I use 40 grit on my DA. Uh, I didn't have any eight inch paper, so I'm just using a six inch today on a flat palm type sander. And just keep that thing flat over your area while you're sanding. And only sand this. And when you start, I'll show you guys, when you start um, to getting it down, you know, it'll be humped up like this. You can see the big hump around this one. I kind of left it a little bit here. Uh, up here it's fe you know feathered in to the old fiberglass and it's nice and smooth transition there's no I went ahead and sanded this one all the way there's a couple air bubbles there I got to fix but no big deal um, nice and smooth uh, transition you can see where you know there's just a little bit of shiny right here around the outside edge from where we uh, you know didn't scotch bright that or sand that and that's the way I like to do it that way I know when I get my fiberglass down to that spot that's level that's straight they say you know oh you need to sand and do all this all around it no just do it like I did it grind it lay your glass after you sand after you get it all sanded come back you know and then we'll finish blocking this out and make sure when you're done there's no shiny. There's nothing, you know, it's all fully prepped all the way up to your glass. So I'll keep sanding this a little bit further, and I'll definitely sand this one. It's all got, all this has got to be removed all the way down to where it meets back to the factory glass. So that's what I'm going to be doing. It's time consuming, tedious, and stinky, uh, itchy. I've got a bunch more to go. These ones are gonna all a lot bigger, so we got tons more here, but same concept, just gonna sand the crap out of it, nice and flat. When we get it all done, we'll come back in with a skim coat of Duraglass over it all and fill in all the rest of our pinholes, pits, and anything like that, block that out, and then we're good. We'll be ready for primer. I'm gonna keep doing this and uh, 
probably get these spots knocked out before I head out today. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, piece this thing together like a puzzle and weld it up. I'll put this one in there first. And I've already made a, I took my punch and made punch holes in it so I can tack this one down. The other ones, they'll all get welded together so I don't really need to put holes in them. But uh, I'll go ahead and piece this all together here, put this where it goes. In my next one, weld it, then the last one, weld it all up. Here we go. All right, guys. Um, I went ahead and tacked it in. Uh, I went ahead and hit all my welds with the uh, flap wheel, knock off the knock off the tits on the tacks. Um, you can see I did not get into the metal. You try not to as much as possible. Now we'll go back um, again, and we'll go ahead and fill in all these spots in the middle here and here. And uh, then finish, you know, tacking it up all the way around. Hit it with the, hit those tacks with the grinder one more time. And we'll get pretty much the same result as here, but it'll be filled in in between. And then from there, we will, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish prepping, cleaning up, and um, neutralizing with the Pour 15 Rust Neutralizer. I'll neutralize this stuff. And then I'll get this stuff uh, coated with pour 15 today. If you guys can tell, pretty much everything else is good on here. Just these rails are starting to go. So I figure we'll pour 15 them for them. And I know I hear it a lot, people in my comments. Pour 15's not made for cars, blah, 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 blah. Well, I've been using it for years and years and years, and I'm telling you, it's good stuff. Um, I mean, what else are you going to do to this besides replace the rails and... Um, spend a whole lot more money so that stuff will just prolong this for him it'll make it last pretty much you know i don't say the rest of his life because he's not an old man but it's going to last him for many more years to come so i'll go ahead and get that stuff ready get those poor 15 and then uh, from there that when that dries we'll um, we won't leave that poor 15 uncoated we'll just uh, do some spray undercoating under there and kind of clean that up a little bit better then uh, we'll be ready to spray these parts here and those parts there well that part so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and then we'll be back to uh, bodywork these spots so we can spray this hopefully get this stuff in primer by the end of the day all right guys I uh, went ahead and finished welding that up and I pour 15 those four braces there. Uh, t tomorrow we'll go ahead and uh, sand the rest of this bottom here a little bit and go ahead and throw on a nice coat of uh, undercoating on it. But for tonight we're going to go ahead and move on to the, um, the body work. Uh, when I, after I get my fiberglass done, I like to coat it with a top coat of Duraglass. It's what I've used for years. It seems to be pretty good stuff. There's definitely plenty of other brands that are good too, but uh, it's pretty much the same as body fill. Uh, it just has fiberglass reinforcement in it. We'll mix this stuff up and I like to just go ahead and put a skim coat over all my spots and fill in any and all extra pinholes. I don't know if it's any better than just regular body filler, but in my opinion it is. Uh, it's got the fiberglass reinforcement and it, you know, it matches this stuff pretty good. It fills the holes and 
it sticks real nice. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and spread this stuff on everywhere here and back over here. But that won't take me long. And then I'll go ahead and block those spots out with some matey grit. And then we'll put a skim coat all over that again with just our regular uh, lightweight filler, our Z grip. Um, we'll just put a light coat over all that and then block that out and then we should be ready for primer. So I'll get back at it and we'll be back. All right, we got our uh, braces done. Everything seam sealed. 415 um, now we're going to take our grinder and we'll wire wheel this up here and make sure we get all that rough old stuff off the loose flaky stuff we'll blow some uh, undercoating on it now as soon as I get this primed I've got everything taped up to spot prime it all I did not have to um, use any body fill over this. I just duraglassed it and blocked it out and everything came out, every single spot came out almost perfect. So I didn't have to go back. I didn't have to put anything over it. Everything is nice and smooth, perfectly straight, even over here. Nice and straight and smooth. You can't feel it at all. Um, and how I did this dura glass, a lot of people think, man, that stuff's so hard to sand once it's dry. Well, it is. It's very hard. Just put you some 40 grit, 36 grit on a mud hog, uh, eight inch grinder. If you don't have that, you can use a six inch. Just keep it flat. Uh, knock the top off. That top on dura glass is usually just a tiny bit stickier gummy. So I use a DA knock the top off once i once i've just shape it slightly with that da then i'll go back with my blocks and that's how you make sure it's nice and straight and not spend all week sanding on all these spots just trying to block them out alone because this stuff's like concrete but we'll go ahead and uh spot prime all these spots i'm gonna prime that whole thing and then spot prime these and then later on we'll go back and spray this and this but uh, that'll probably be tomorrow I guess we'll be back all right our primers on good and dry I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good sanding I'm gonna sand this top here with some 500 just to kind of make it go a little bit quicker and then I'll uh, go back over it real quick with some eight wet, and then it'll be ready for spray. It laid out real nice. Same thing, well, these over here, I'm not even gonna sand them with 500, I'm just gonna use 800 wet on these. They all turned out real nice and slick. I'll go ahead and uh, throw some 800 on a wet, or a soft block and block them out. Make sure they're good and straight. But uh, they didn't even really have any pinholes in them. They pretty much laid out nice and flat. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll mask it up to blend these corners in. Since we're not painting the whole bed, <clears throat> we'll be back. All right, guys, everything is sanded. You can see I had a few burn throughs where it was not quite flat. You know, now it is. Everything's nice and straight, um, nice and smooth. I went ahead and cleaned it all, and um, and now it's ready for uh, our base coat, well, sealer on our burn throughs, and then our base coat. Uh, over here, I went ahead and taped it up to spray on our base. Now my clear line will go lower. That's why you can see I have it back taped here. I'm gonna blend my white in here and then I'll come back, pull my tape, and then I'll spray my clear on down in there. And, I'll, and I'm only doing that because I'm only repairing these corners. There's no need in spraying the whole bed. There's a good break here with the steps. 
down under here so our collar you won't even see our collar um, that and we have an exact match of the collar it's like dead on so um, same thing on these sides same thing I'll you know I've taped it up to spray our base and then we'll come or our sealer then our base and then we'll come back and pull our tape and then we'll clear on down and run that blend on down so you won't see it I hope you guys kind of get that how I'm trying to show that or how I'm you know demonstrating it you can see I've back taped it there now my base I'll bring it in bring it just an ounce over my stuff I'll, I'll lightly with pressure and air turn it down turn my fluid down and I'll just lightly blend this in pull this lay my clear same thing on all four corners now this uh, stuff right here is was stuff that wasn't really supposed to be fixed the only thing I was supposed to be doing was just the brace there that we've repaired and undercoating it but since we're here um, and somebody's painted up to our moldings and we had to we were changing the moldings that was part of the job so I mean to make it easier for us we're basically just respraying the corners where the moldings go blending our clear in and then we'll have a nice fresh clean paint spot for our moldings they'll you know and they won't stick out there won't be no chipping or flaking around our moldings I'm gonna go ahead and um, set you guys up on the tripod and give this thing some spray I'll probably film for a little bit and then it'll start getting foggy in here so I'll shut it down but I will uh, go ahead and give it a spray and hopefully when we come back you guys will see the reveal we're gonna start putting this thing together so we'll be back tomorrow to put her together all right the sealers on <clears throat> I wanted to go ahead and give you guys an update on that I just uh, I don't like to seal my whole work I've already primed it my body works straight everything is good I see a lot of people just blow the whole coat a sealer on everything I just feel like it's a waste of material uh, as long as your body work areas are covered anything that you sanded with 80 grit or any type of body work that you've done with bondo filler anything as long as you got those areas covered with primer or sealer you're good so I uh, We'll go ahead and let this dry a little bit on these and then I'll tack them. That's the next step, tack cloth. And then I'll go ahead and start laying on my base. Once I lay on my base and then my clear, then we will not be back until it's done tomorrow. All right guys, we got everything done and sprayed and put back together and today's reveal day. Uh, we're real excited about this one. It, uh, it turned out beautiful, uh, better than expected. It's just a completely beautiful truck. So we're real excited. Let's go check it out. All right guys, check this thing out. It's simply beautiful. Not a scratch or ding or nick on it. Love it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Let us know if we've done a good job saving this thing. It wasn't terrible from the start, but it sure is bad now. Love it. The spot on the bed up in here that we fixed. A lot of you guys are probably curious about that. We uh, just kind of blended it in. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. 
you can't really tell it the collar was like I said dead on we cut out and repaired up there and uh, you know filled it primed it blended it in this is just dirt that stuff will all wipe off all my area was clean it's got a good clean good clean blend turned out fantastic the top turned out fantastic I've got all the trim on it and everything I've got all the trim on the body everything turned out nice and straight and perfect really proud of this one guys like I said let us know how we did if you got any questions or comments drop them down below thanks for watching guys